Uh, speaking of Indiana, they do head to Iowa City to take on the Hawkeyes, who will be without Patrick McCaffrey, uh, who is taking a, an extended leave for his mental health, which we hope uh, was the best for him. But a, a team that's 0-3 in the Big Ten now, that that cannot be uh, – good for Fran McCaffrey's squad with the Hoosiers coming in. They're, these are two desperate teams, both needing this win. Indiana needs it from a standpoint of showing they can go on the road and play tough and and finish the job because this is going to be a hard game. It's on the road. It's a 9 o'clock game. You haven't played since last year. Um, it, it's it, There's just a lot of things. that, it, And they've got kind of a new offense because you don't have Xavier. They've had to adjust to now just being Jalen hood Shafino. You're going to have Tamar Bates in the starting lineup. So a lot of change for the Hoosiers. But it should be – it's an excellent opportunity for them to get a, a sneak out, a road win in the Big Ten. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, considering the way Indiana the, – the they played three road games. They won Xavier, then they – they got punched in the mouth at Rutgers and didn't respond. They got punched in the mouth against Kansas and didn't respond. Um, they can't let that happen again at Iowa. Um, they, they need to start better. Uh, they need to be more aggressive and more physical. Um, it concern, you know, I, I, it would be concerning if you were uh, Mike Woodson, in, in my opinion, because A, Iowa has played those games and Indiana hasn't played. It'd be a 13-day break. I, I, I don't. I don't like that from the Indiana standpoint. And secondly, um, I think Iowa's going to have a higher level of desperation. Uh, and I know that Patrick McCaffrey is one of their, what, three best players probably, four best players, uh, and he's not going to play. But they got to win this game. If they're going to have any hope at all um, to be in the in the Big Ten race or even their NCAA tournament possibilities, you can't go and four in the Big Ten and lose a home game. So we'll see how Indiana responds. Indiana's going to have to prove it to me because I haven't seen um, this team have the level of tenacity they need to have to win on the road the last two times they played. Well, I think what I would like to see, Rick, is we, we're going to talk about the offense a lot. And you just mentioned not having a game in, in two weeks basically is tough. And then you got to go on the road against a Big Ten opponent. Even though Iowa is struggling, they're going to be without one of their best players. To me, I think what I want to see is in the first – six to eight minutes as they're trying to find their jump shot. I don't think it's going to be pretty. How effective are they on the defensive end? Because I feel like at times this season, particularly in games they've struggled, they've allowed the the lack of shot making or a lack of scoring to affect what they're doing on the defensive end. If they are, if they get after it the first eight to 10 minutes and don't let, um, you know, the shot making affect their defense, I think they're going to have a great chance to win. But if they get a little lackadaisical like we've seen at times and, and hang their heads and, and don't get after it defensively, that's where I feel like they can get in trouble because even though Iowa has struggled recently, that's a team that pushes the tempo and they can put a lot of points on the scoreboard. Yeah, that's their whole MO. I mean, they want to beat you with offense, not defense. When they had their really good teams, that's the way it was. They've, they've always been a below average uh, defensive team. Uh, and what I agree with you, what's concerning for Indiana is Xavier Johnson, in my opinion, uh, their best perimeter defender uh, in terms of technique, in terms of uh, mindset, uh, in, in terms of, you know, being engaged in the game. Uh, you're going to have to see it from Hood Shafino and Tamar Bates that they're going to be the ones who take it, you know, take the defensive mentality into the game. I haven't seen that from those two guys over a in entire game yet and maybe in stretches and um that's going to be a, a coaching challenge for mike woodson to tell those guys you know you guys set the tone um you you guys are the ones that have, have to make the other team uncomfortable on, on 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 offense by actually getting into your man and not you know letting me let, let them feel comfortable with the ball uh the ncaa's uh transformation committee met and came out with a bunch of ridiculous um recommendations that that may work for some sports but uh the 25 percent of of their of the members being in, allowed into a tournament which would equate to a 96 team ncaa men's basketball tournament uh everyone that everyone finds completely and totally ridiculous i, I hope to gosh this does not happen uh this would really really water down a, a great great product uh, that is, uh, I guess nothing is perfect, but this thing is is running pretty well. And in an age where 
college, especially college sports, are changing at, at, at light speed. This thing is still working well. And why on God's green earth would you screw up something that has made it through all of this and still is a shining star? Yeah, I mean, the only reasons I can think of are money and <laughs> money and money. Uh, <laughs> 20, 20, I don't know how many would it be? 68 to 94, is that what they're talking about? Or 96? Yeah, something like so that. That would be what, 28 more teams? I don't know. I, I'm not very good at math. It's been a long time since I've been in finite math. Um, you know, and then maybe they're doing this to take some pressure off some coaches. So, you know, 28 more coaches can say, I made the NCAA tournament last year. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. I mean, most of the people that, I know uh, and I follow on social media who are really plugged into college basketball and follow it all year long and are really intense basketball fans don't like it, but I don't think they care. Uh, the people who are behind this see it as a way, you know, to have an extra weekend or an extra four or five days of games on television and create more revenue. And they think the average fan uh, is more likely to embrace it than, you know, some of us media people are. I don't know. I would I would think the, the majority of coaches, Dustin and Rick, would not want this because – or the majority of especially P5 coaches, but I, I, it's just going to water down. I, I, like I said, it's also another chance for injury. Uh, it, it's just it, – there's just so many things that I don't think that they they're, – they're getting enough games. They're, they're playing these, these conference tournaments, which wears guys out before the NCAA tournament. So now you're going to have this uh, a grinding – ACC or Big Ten or SEC tournament that grinds for five days, and then you're going to turn around and enter a 96 team tournament uh, for another what five weeks? How long that would take? However long, it just right. seems like it's just ludicrous. Well, I mean, there are some un unintended consequences too. I don't think they're thinking about in terms of a. You're also watering down the regular season, which has already been watered down tremendously. What for the average person who's going to tune into this? There's even less incentive to tune into the regular season now because it doesn't really mean anything anymore, right? I mean, what does it mean? Unless you're really into college basketball, um, the games aren't going to really mean that much. And if you lose a game now in January, oh, you can still probably make the tournament because they're going to take 96 teams this year. And also, you know, when I talk about more coaches getting in, it's also you're going to have more games where a you know, a four seed is going to lose to a 19 seed. And that's going to be an embarrassment for the coach who had a pretty good season with a four seed. So, you know, it, it all comes down to putting more, it's television inventory. They have all these networks right. now and they need to get more um, inventory to put on there. And their research, I'm sure they've researched this, is that TV has an appetite for it. They will pay for it. Some people will watch it. Yes, we're going to do it. That's what I think. Well, and real quick, Rick, and then I've got to I've got to jet out. Um, but the thing that would frustrate me more about I would be more open to a ninety six team tournament, and people probably would disagree with me, is if they were to do something along the lines of giving a lower conference the regular season champion okay. and the tournament champion a uh, both of those an automatic bid. Um, I'm not saying that that's the best solution because we see a lot of times some of those lower conference teams get demolished in these games. Sometimes they go on a run like St. Peter's or like George Mason or whatever. But to me, that's not going to happen. If you do that, you're going to reward a 6-14 and 14 Minnesota, an 8-12 and 12 Mississippi State. And to some degree, we already have that. But you would just see more of these Power 5 conference teams that already get enough uh, opportunity to to get into the tournament. I mean, we've seen the Big Ten get nine teams. We've seen the Big East, the old Big East, get 11 teams. Um, so to me, what's going to happen is you're just going to see more mediocrity instead of, you know, let's put two teams in, one team that won their conference tournament and then the other team that won the regular season tournament from uh, the from the, the lower level. Right, well, let me play devil's advocate real quick before you jet off so that you're telling me you'd rather see – Wright State and Northern Kentucky in than another Big Ten team or North Alabama and Jacksonville State in than, than another Big Ten. I wouldn't. <laughs> One of those teams I, is enough for me. <laughs> I think I think you are on I think I think from the aesthetic point of view, I think from watching basketball, that's a great point. That because I think 90% of people would agree with you. I just would like to see a more deserving team get in as opposed to 
Yeah, we went seven and thirteen. What? In yeah, the, there's nothing conference. more pitiful in college basketball than the ninth or tenth place team it, in the ACC or SEC or the Big Ten on the uh, the day after Selection Sunday, whining about how they didn't make the field. Exactly. You had a million chances to make the field. You didn't do it. Bingo. So I agree with you from the aesthetic point, and and as a basketball fan, those games aren't going to be as interesting, more than likely, but. From a reward standpoint, I would, if they were going to expand, I would reward those teams that actually accomplished something as opposed to, yeah, we just right. squeak by and, and you know, we, we won seven conference games. So that's good enough. Give us a spot. 